going right in. So SMBC, we are a uh, global top 15 uh, banking institution by assets. However, in the US, I believe we're around top 10. Um, actually, in the US, we just celebrated our centennial two years ago. So we've been in operation here for over 100 years. Um, globally, though, we have uh, over 65,000 employees and over 500 branches and domestic uh, and offices uh, all around the world. So SMBC is actually part of the larger uh, financial group. Uh, we collectively call ourselves SMBC Group. Um, so our commercial banking business uh, continues to be the core and the anchor of this group. But we have all these different financial services companies supporting uh, our our organization. So we have a securities business, credit card companies. We also have a CBC arm that uh, exclusively, exclu uh, they invest mostly in uh, Japan. And we also have an online banking uh, company. But you know, our strength is that we have all these different uh, companies that you know, offer these financial services. So we really like to promote ourselves as a one-stop shop for our customers. So in terms of innovation and our um, collaboration with startups and VCs, um, we've been trying to incorporate a lot of uh, resources from external organizations the past five years or so. Um, so at the top, I've listed a few of our LP investments. So we're in Bloomberg Capital. We're also in the Vision Fund at SoftBank. Um, we're also very happy to be with ERA. The Miara Creation Fund actually was established two and a half years ago by SMBC and Toyota and Sparks, which is an asset manager, and that's uh, more focused on auto investments. Um, we're very happy to be working with Workbench as well, uh, and we have similar partnerships with Plug and Play, StartX. And we also work directly with startups themselves. So in 2013, we uh, partnered with Square to bring uh, their company to the Japanese market. Um, and quite interestingly, Japan was Square's uh, first international market outside of North America, so we're very proud to be one of their partners there. We have a similar partnership with Stripe. Um, we uh, brought them over to Japan, and we are also investors in them as well. So, um, you know, corporates have a very notorious um, reputation for being very conservative and slow, but hopefully this uh, slide can show you that SMBC is quite open-minded, and we're always looking forward to you know, learning more about startups, other venture capital firms. Um, so hopefully we can get to know you guys better in the future. So as a bank, um, we are very lucky to be working with customers, both large and small, and our customers also belong in every single industry out there. Um, so our relationship primarily focuses on banking with them. However, um, because we do have a very close relationship with our customers, a lot of times they approach us with some of their um, needs, uh, business challenges, strategic needs. And what we do is we introduce them to some of our deal flow and network from the previous slide, and we do a business matching between our Japanese customers and some of the US startup companies that we have you've gotten to know over the few years. So um, through these efforts, we've been able to introduce a startup um, to one of our customers, and our customer actually made an investment into that startup. We also have another customer who is currently trying to set up a JV with another uh, uh, startup in our portfolio. Uh, we also have established distribution partnerships between our customer and the startup. So we, we feel like we have a good um, you know, track record of bridging that gap between uh, emerging tech companies and uh, some of our customers. However, um, not only do our customers have some business challenges, but we also have some pain points that we would like to address with you today. So um, it's going to be quite technical. Um, these are mostly back office operations within our bank. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about covenants. So covenants are uh, legal obligations by a company to its creditor. And it lies out what the company will or will not, or will or will not do um, to sort of honor that agreement. And uh, covenants can be lengthy. And so we're only interested in learning about certain pieces of information in that agreement. So you know, what is the type of covenant? What's the frequency of reporting? What's the grace period? Uh, what's the start and end date? So we currently have about 10 employees uh, going through all these covenants. 
and extracting that data and inputting that into our covenants monitoring system. So obviously that's not a good use of their time and we really would like to streamline this process by introducing an RPA or OCR technology um, so they can better use their time towards something else. So the second thing, RegTech, um, we have a governance team like any other corporate um, that monitors regulations in the US. But because we are a global bank, we are also responsible for knowing any changes in regulation in Japan, uh, Canada, Europe, and sometimes uh, we don't, uh, we're not able to detect these new regulatory changes in time. And our governance team's main responsibility is to, one, detect these new changes and to report them to uh, the respective internal teams in our management. So we're looking for a company who can, one, detect this, but also summarize all this information automatically and transmit the message to the appropriate parties. And the last one I want to talk about is um, AML. So as a company whose business is to lend money to others, we have to make sure that none of our transactions are part of any suspicious activities and compliant with OFAC sanctions lists and UN sanctions lists. Um, so at SMBC, we execute over 30,000 uh, wire transfers in a given day. And 10% of those transactions, so around 3,000, are what we call uh, false hits. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that I'm, tr gonna, I'm trying to send money to somebody, um, and that person's name, last name is Hirano, which is a very common Japanese name. So in my Swift message, it says H-I-R-A-N-O for Hirano. But as I just spelled it out for you, that name also contains the word Iran which is in the OFAC sanctions list. So obviously that would be flagged as a hit by our monitoring system and we, we have 3,000 of those that 20 people have to go through every single day. And out of that 3,000, only one or two tend to be you know, actual hits. So if, if there is a company out there you know, working on something that will really um, you know, make this process more efficient, we'd be more than happy to talk to you guys, learn about your technology. But regardless of um, you know, all these things, as I said earlier, uh, we work with customers in all industries. So if you're not in FinTech, we'd still be happy to talk to you about how we can work together in the future. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so any questions? Yes. Um, my internal audit data. So I actually am not part of that team. So I, 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 so I will not be able to answer that question for you. Um, but I can definitely refer you to somebody on that team. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm, I'm quite not sure how they do that right now at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we do have people within our bank um, who do build these things, but um, we, what we've been doing for the past two years or so, we've, we've been um, relying on external organizations to really help us in, with uh, implementing these because it's just quicker that way. Um, and we have a department called the IT Innovation Department. It's really just dedicated to working with all of those 10 or so companies within our group um, to, you know, listen to their needs, and they're the ones working directly with the fintech startups. We do a lot of POCs. We've actually integrated many of those technologies within our bank. Um, and you know, we're a large organization, so we have many, many different needs. <laughs>